we are recording. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Three Idiots with a Mic. And we are definitely stupid because we started this once and we weren't recording. That's all my bad. My bad. <laughs> it wasn't as bad as like we didn't record half an episode and realize it. We recorded. We realized it like 30 seconds in and we're like, oh, wait, <laughs> take two. No, 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 no. Correction. You noticed thirty yeah. seconds in. <laughs> Thankfully, out of the two, out of the three of us, added two idiots with a mic and yes, Zach. exactly. Know. Thankfully, one of us was smart and noticed that we weren't recording. I have my moments. As always, I'm your host, Brandon. Joining me is the smart one, William. <laughs> we're still figuring out the kinks. Bear with us. We're, <laughs> we're new to the game. <laughs> uh, and the other idiot that uh, did not press the record button, Lewis. Hey guys. And our of course, leader. Our, no, well, is there a leader? Or, or, or our fearless producer. There you go. You have one job, hit record, fail. <laughs> and as always, our very special guest, it's Zach. I'm Zach. <laughs> it's Zachary. Hi, How's everybody. Everyone? How's Why everyone are you wearing doing a waist on your head? Hmm? Look, at, look at your cousin. What? Look at oh. one of those hats that you see in the Kentucky Derby. Take that off. <laughs> <laughs> It's so do people? Track. Come on, man. Are people able to see the visuals or no? No, oh. no. But he was wearing a mesh trash on his head. Yes, it it suited him very well because he is trash. I, I love trash. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that joke was garbage. That joke was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> oh fuck the puns! How's everyone doing? How how's everyone's week? Doing Anything this? exciting? Um, fantastic. And if I okay. may shamelessly plug my own projects, yeah, um, go, I'm, go ahead. So I just launched um, a couple weeks ago, maybe a week or two, uh, my own uh, show, uh, A Cry for Help. Uh, okay. And we're working on uh, this month's installment. Uh, and so far, we've got a lot of like really great interviews and segments and stuff like that. But um, our big like stunt project that we've been working on for this episode is... Um, my partner David uh, recorded an entire audiobook of the old man in the sea while huffing helium. Oh my lord! <laughs> so we just finished recording that today. We just got the end of that in. So uh, it's going to be something. Um, oh, awesome. So wait, is your show only once a month? Yes. Ah, uh, okay. I have. I still have not listened to it. I'm going to. How long is the show? Like, is it a long one? Since you only do it a, like monthly? Well, the first episode is only 45 minutes. Yeah. But okay. it's looking like this one is going to be a bit longer because we have a lot of really great content in there. A lot of like oh. interviews and stuff that I just can't, I don't have the heart to cut. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I have done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I work at a school, so children are going back to school here in Miami. It's starting. And uh, I got to admit, I did not miss them. <laughs> it sucks seeing children <laughs> and people again. Uh, I just don't, I don't get how kids feel safe or it's, well, I work at like an adult at school. So it's like, I don't know how anyone feels safe going to school right now, but Hey, I'm bringing there. back everybody into the office now. Next it's week. weird. It's it weird. I don't know. Like, and then I know people that like their company, they're literally not going back to work like the entire year. Yeah. Like, yeah. We're bringing back everybody next week already. Pretty much. Damn. Weird. I don't know. Schools are weird. Thankfully, I don't. There's no like young, young kids. The youngest kids are ninth graders, so they're like fourteen. They have some sort of. No, actually, they're stupid. Ninth graders, <laughs> fourteen-year-old kids are really stupid. They really, really are. They really. Um, are. But, <laughs> but yeah, so, it's it's just uh, and traffic because Miami has horrible oh, traffic, and yeah, now it's yeah. even worse than usual. Kill me. That's so yeah, word. Lewis, you were gonna say? No, honestly, like I, I, I love this whole situation that's going on and everything. It, it's it's great for traffic. And yes, <laughs> it's I suppose so that's good. a silver lining. Yeah, yeah and yeah. other things that have things. come out, which is pretty funny. I, that we're I not gonna that... go into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, well, you you don't have bad traffic where you live, so that's. Oh yes, there is. Yes, oh, there really? is. Oh, okay. I four is a wonderful thing in certain areas, and it, it, oh, yeah, it's yeah. horrible trying to get through there. But <laughs> honestly, I wanted to talk about SNL. Why? Because of the whole shit that happened with this chick? Huh? No, SNL. The the whole uh, what do you call it debate 
the, the, oh my god, the cold opening. Wait, not Jim Carrey. So, oh, I haven't, I, haven't, and Carrey? I haven't seen it. So yeah, oh, Jim, Jim Carrey's god. playing Biden, right? Google yeah, that. Jim Carrey's Biden, and they still have Alec Baldwin, and I'm, they have um, oh Maya god. Rudolph coming back to be Kamala. Kamala, yeah, okay, okay. It is so good. So it, 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 so good. And depending since we're, like we're recording, we record on Wednesdays, and tonight is the VP debate. Yes, yeah. it is. Oh my god, I hope shit happens on this because I cannot wait till Saturday night. Who do they have playing pants on SNL? Uh, I don't know. I don't think they've announced it yet. I don't think they have announced it yet because. You know, do you think they're gonna cast outside of their regulars again, like they have with the two presidential candidates? Or I mean, let me tell they, you, Jim Carrey, they... Jim Carrey and his teeth are yes. some of the most glorious characters ever on <laughs> SNL. His and eyebrow yes, his when teeth he took off different... glasses and his fake eyebrow was like hanging in front of his eye. <laughs> For like half the skit, and then because I noticed it, I pointed it out to Samara, and then they cut over to Baldwin because he was he was saying stuff, and you go back, and all of a sudden his eyebrows fixed again. <laughs> it's like, did he fix it himself, or did somebody come running from backstage and fix it? But no, it was it was kind of eerie because they're they're back in the studio with SNL, yeah, um, and so seeing like the band all in their like little plexiglass cases and so everybody. How- how so was separated. SNL? It was, really, after, it was bizarre. How was SNL during like the height of the pandemic when like nothing it was going out? No, no, they one, uh, no they were Zoom. Enough. They were edited Zoom calls. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit, that's weird. It okay. was cool actually. They did it really well. I, okay. I didn't think they did a good job like playing off of each other. But let me tell you, Baldwin and Jim Carrey, like holy shit. That I that just, performance was just brilliant. Like, tell you how good it was. Samara is not a Jim Carrey fan. Like she doesn't, but but she he was himself. loving it. She absolutely loved it. And I know that unfortunately, if Biden wins, not on wood, um, they're not going to be able to have Jim Carrey on SNL for four years. Well, but I mean, they kept be- Alec Baldwin around. I mean, they kept him around, but he wasn't like the permanent one. Plus, Jim Carrey, like, no offense, because I I don't know, I may be out of the loop. But what's Baldwin doing nowadays versus Jim Carrey? Then right, yeah, all his shows are off and everything. Yeah, but Jim but Carrey is still Harry actively doing... a movie star. But what other than what has Jim Carrey done recently? Sonic the Hedgehog. He's... Other than Sonic, true, I totally forgot about Sonic. He, he's got a show on Showtime. Showtime, yeah, uh, Happiness, uh, right? Oh yeah, yeah. the one yes. where he's like, uh, uh, what's this guy's name? He's like a TV, like like a like a positive, like a, like Rogers. a Mr. Rogers kind yeah, of, like thing. A Mr. Yeah. Rogers, yeah. yes. So yeah, that's yeah. what he's been doing. Which like, I saw a few episodes, and it's actually really good. I want to really um, check that out because I do. I, I like a to... serious Jim Carrey as much as I like him being silly, like he is now on SNL. I do like a Eternal Sunshine or Man on the oh, Moon. Like I, yeah. I, I, the majestic. Oh, yeah. If you're yes. into filmmaking, like you are, Zach, and some of us try to be. There is a wonderful scene in Happiness where it's a it's a one shot, Love and it. the camera does a three sixty multiple oh, yes. times, mm-hmm. and you see the room changing because it's like time going by and her pulling herself out of depression and improving her life. Oh wow! And then if you go on YouTube, the theme? there is a bird's eye view of how they did it, and you see like the guy with the camera panning. And everybody behind, there's set designers and, and, and grips and everything, changing everything around as the camera is coming around. And it's like a couple minutes long, and it's, it's flawless. Is, okay, isn't I'll have to check this out. Flawless. Isn't that the theme song of the show, that, that sequence? I don't think it's a theme. I, I think it's a scene. I don't know if it, it may be a theme. I don't know. I don't follow it enough to I got to check it out. But okay, check well, it out. Have a look at it. It is incredibly well done. So like, welcome right. to our Jim Carrey fan cast. Yeah. <laughs> so, right? On that note. We're taking a break this week. We're going to dive into Jim Carrey. <laughs> on that honestly, note. Brandon, I think you should definitely check it out because I think you would love. It's only like 15 minutes long, the cold open. So it's not long, I, super long. I mean, like, yeah, it's, the a, sketch it's, is really it's long good. for a cold open, but it's good. Look, I'll, say this, feel it. I'll say this. Before we, we go into Zach's segment, I have just never been a fan of SNL. Maybe I would need to give it a shot. Dude, uh, even I, uh, I kind I of grow, grew uh, tired of SNL for a long time. Okay. Because I grew up in the 90s where it was kind of like, holy shit. Right. These are like the gold standard, you know, besides the 70s and 80s, obviously. Yeah. But... And, and Chris Rock is the um, host yeah. for this week, too. So yeah. it's, it's definitely good. I don't know. I, but I yeah. love their presidential stuff. 
their presidential stuff is just fucking hilarious. Okay, I'll I'll check it out. I'll definitely I'll definitely be checking out. On that note, uh, oh, as always, we start off our show with uh, the very special segment, Spiel Binge. Spiel Binge. This is where Zach Spiel brings Binge. one Steven Spielberg movie every week until we finish his filmography. So what is the movie this week? Yes, we've got The Terminal this week. I'm going to yeah, shut up then because I've never seen this movie. So I'm going to... No. Tra- well, okay, i got to be honest. I made a mistake. I actually, I watched the um, unlicensed gay porn knockoff The Sperminal. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I... I also am going to have to sit this one out um, unless you want to hear some real graphic stuff. No, um, <laughs> I, please, I'm about to Google that. Shit. Is that real? <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that it is. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh huh. And uh, imagine you... catch me if you can. They don't oh. have to change the title for that one. <laughs> no. I, man. <laughs> anyway. Um, that really. Oh man, I I wanted that to be real so bad. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> so right, the so... terminal, the terminal. Um, As so William another looks cla- it up, <laughs> another collaboration between uh, Spielberg and Tom Hanks. Yes. Uh, it stars Tom Hanks as a man from a fictional kind of Soviet bloc country, Eastern European, um, that uh, while he is on a plane uh, to the U.S. Uh, the country, there's a military coup, and so the country no longer exists. And so when he lands in the United States, there's a uh, essentially a, an immigration clause that has him unable to go onto U.S. soil, but also not able to go back home because there isn't a country to go home to. And so he is stuck living at the titular uh, airport. That sounds um, horrible. And that's actually based on a true story. So that yeah, actually it is. It's did inspired happen. by an actual guy. And I want to say Iran? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it is, uh, it's a quirky dramedy. It's, it's about, um, all the different colorful characters that he encounters working at the airport and just his life and his worldview and stuff like that. And it's Stanley Tucci, the Tucci, the (laughs) Tucci, Stanley Tucci playing the bad guy. Um, and it's, yeah, I mean, I don't mean to sound reductive, but it's cute. It is. It's so great. It, it's so cheesy and so great. It, it just feels. It, it's. It gives you the the. It warms the soul. The warm and fuzzies. <laughs> that that must be so horrible. Like not being able to go back home, and you're just stuck there, and the you know weird laws don't allow you to. God, that that would suck. And he but, gets stuck in the airport. And we've got we've got uh, early career Zoe Saldana. We've got early career Diego Luna. We've got yep. uh, Shane McBride. We've got uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones playing opposite Tom Hanks. Um, it's, I mean, it has a great score from John Williams. It's a simple movie. It's yeah. fun. I'm not kind of here or there. I'm not going to be like, oh my God, The Terminal. But I'm also not going to be like, oh, I hated it. Like, I, yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. It's a middle ground movie for sure. Yeah. I think the worst part of the movie is Jesus. Catherine Zeta-Jones. Really? Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. The guy that the movie is based on... Uh, it's partially inspired by the true story of the 18-year stay of Miran Karimi Nasseri in Terminal 1 of Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport, France, from 1988 to 2006. 18 years? Fuck! 18 years! Living in an airport. In an airport. He, what the f- how is that possible? So we've got uh, Stanley Tucci as the bad guy. He's uh, an officer at the airport who's kind of enforcing so all these rules, trying to get Tom Hanks to get out. Um, so we've got kind of a culture clash thing as well with Tom Hanks kind of learning American customs and everything, uh, watching TV, reading. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, like, again, I don't really have much to say about it. Um, it is, again, it's on the long side, as most of these movies have been. Um, but it's nice. It is nice. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just nice. It's nice. I give it a seven out of ten. Yeah, I think I give it, it a it, seven too. I mean, that is the most middle ground just thing I've ever heard Zach say. It's nice. <laughs> like when it's the true movie, though. when a movie just has nothing. Like it's not bad. It's not good. You're just it's like, not it's, inoffensive. It's not. Yeah. It's it doesn't there. have anything that stands out. Like cinematically, it it yeah. really doesn't. It has a solid Tom Hanks performance. It has exactly. a really nice score. It's really well shot, well edited. It's just it's pleasant. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Anything else? <laughs> I think uh, this I've is... seen it referred to as being quietly post 9-11, which is very yeah. accurate. When did this um, come out? 2004. So yeah, three. Yeah, three. in terms of just the, the handling of obviously the subject matter being set in an airport, but then also talking about immigration statuses and uh, just like global tensions, it is, it's very much reflective of what the world looked like in 2004, which is interesting. I've heard that that is also the same for, I forget who the quote was from, where he talked about how um, after Catch Me If You Can is released, we go into like post 9-11 Spielberg talking yeah. about this and War of the Worlds and Munich. And I think there was one more where they talk about how they all reflect a, a changing worldview. So I'm excited to get into those. Minority um, Report. Yeah. Uh, they actually, I was looking at the Wikipedia, they built the airport in that movie. Yeah. It wasn't an actual airport. It was like a set. That makes that's sense. Pretty, that's pretty crazy. Like I don't, it, shit like that baffles me when you're like, oh yeah, they built this. I'm like, why didn't they just go like, a in like a New York airport? <laughs> I guess it's expensive, or or, and... or, or or even any airport for that matter. That's very. I true. mean, maybe Sanford Airport, which for those who don't know, Sanford Airport is one kind of airports that had like maybe five flights out and four flights in. But I mean, I, I guess, and yeah. especially this was filmed like after 9/11. Can you imagine the? security yeah, yeah. nightmare that this would have been i think that security in risks, the end they probably yeah. saved more money making the sets than if they had to pay for special security <clears throat> and in and out and i i gotta say i haven't traveled much in my life but the worst tsa agents i've ever experienced was in new york yeah. that's for damn sure <laughs> What? I've never flown on a plane, so I can't. Uh, is that, that a yeah. choice, or you just never? Yeah, have I've never to been do on a plane. Uh, it's a little of both. By this point, it's a choice thing because I'm old enough to know that like elevators freak me out. So like, is a plane though? is just like a big elevator in my mind. So you drove from Virginia to Orlando when we met you yeah. at Spooky. Yeah, I took a train. Well, I mean, don't think of it. That, don't sure. think of it as like an elevator. Wow. Just think Xanax of it as is like a wonderful a thing. Train that flies <laughs> I... I know it just the containedness of it really gets me. I don't know. So you're you're okay that like you're I mean, never going to go to Europe. You're never going to go to other countries. Months, you're fine with that. He can. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No, True. I'm open to the possibility in the future, but as of right now, I am content with my status of having never been well, on a plane. I will the only tell you downside this. is that if I can't. If you ever decide to like fly this. and you uh. don't want to do it alone, <laughs> give me enough time, and hell, I'll drive down to you and we'll take a flight together. Even if it's like a crappy little flight that goes like two towns <laughs> we'll over do. just like to have the experience. Fuck it, I'll do it. I'll come down there and be like, let's do this. <laughs> oh, don't afraid. put him on a puddle jumper. Don't put him on a puddle jumper. Yeah, pretty much. Is that what they're called? Puddle, puddle Actually, jumpers? You know that's what? what we, no, don't do that. Because if you get a paddle jumper, you're going to get the shittiest plane in the airline company, and you're going to get scared even worse. Do like a regular flight. Like, fly out of your airport into, like, Orlando. You'll get a regular-ass plane. You'll do it great. you get, like, the little wings that says, first time flyer. Um, if you don't, I'll make them for you. <laughs> <laughs> Be fine. They do that? <laughs> I don't know. I could see why it's like now that you, you know, also have to wear a mask the entire time. It's, it's probably it not. Is, the it's best three time spoopy, five me. Unless you fly like American. Yeah, right now it's not. Yeah. You know my. You know what? A sh- what's a really weird, irrational fear that I have? I, on every time that I get on a plane, I'm like, what happens? If I'm in the bathroom and the you finish up quickly, and I'm taking a and shit wipe or a piss. and back to front, and you get your ass back to your seat. <laughs> because I can guarantee you, and then you do sh- the fact that the flight attendants will come knocking as many on that times door as and possible. tell you to get the fuck out. I know it's just horrible. When you gotta go. You gotta go. Yeah, Hor- one one more story. <laughs> When I uh, first time I ever got on a plane, I'm not trying to scare you, he's, Zach. He's not uh, end well. I went to uh, Dominican Republic from Miami, and we went. I guess the there was like a hurricane or a storm, mm-hmm. and we went near it. And I'll never forget that plane must have like dipped a couple stories because I heard the cart literally lift off and go, <laughs> and everything just went flying. 
And my mom was freaking out. And it was the first time I was on a plane. I was like 11 years old. I was like, ah, (laughs) absolutely terrible. Such a horrible time. Well, I have that to look forward to. That doesn't happen. That's the worst flight. The worst flight that you could ever do is flying out to California, going over the Rocky Mountains. Why? Why You always run into turbulence. The well, three times that I've flown out to, to uh, the West Coast was every single time I ran into turbulence. I'm like, motherfucker. And it's not like fun turbulence that it's kind of like, you, you know, like a that's roller coaster. That's not fun turbulence. What the fuck is wrong with you? The, that's the, fun turbulence to you, this? Yeah, it's kind of like, oh, okay, I'm on a roller coaster. All right, no, cool. dude, what is wrong? <laughs> it's all good. But no, this one was like the, eh, eh. I was like, oh, God. It, and I, like there was one occasion where the guy behind me, he was really, really tall, and all I hear is "ow." And I was, I turn around and I go, what "He's just hitting that? his head." He hit his we head against. Like, we flew over <laughs> the Alps like, <laughs> when we were coming back from Italy, oh, poor guy. and there was there was nothing. And no offense to the Rockies, the Alps are a little bit taller. Oh. <laughs> just a little bit. I think it's just Lewis being a fucking crybaby. Oh, I, I don't care for turbulence. I, it doesn't bother me at all. I don't get seasick or like motion sick like that. I it doesn't bother me. I know that if it's my time to die, it's my time to die. That's how I Jesus it. Lord. Oh <laughs> <Alhalla>, yeah. <laughs> well, I've always been of the mindset: if my plane is gonna crash, don't put that mask on. Just let yourself pass out, dude. That's it. Just okay. accept your fate. You know. I, I'm gonna be the guy like. Ah, I'm gonna be like this, but crying at the same time. Ah, you know? <laughs> oh, dude! You know who has uh, really quick before we finally end this segment? You know who has the best? Uh, like, you know how Zach in the beginning of um your flight, like the the flight attendants, like you know, go over the safety regulations yeah. and all that shit. Virgin Airlines has the best. They have this entire music video. And it is incredible. Ooh, ooh, corporate music videos are my favorite. <laughs> Dude, look it up. Look up like Virgin. I will. I Virgin certainly will. Michaels? Have you seen the hot drinks one from Wendy's? I have not actually. That's ooh, it's, not- it's something. <laughs> 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 corporate sponsored that? music videos are my aesthetic. Oh my God. I got to check that one out. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really funny. But on that note... um. What is the next movie? For I oh, believe it is War of the Worlds. Yes, it that's, is. That's going to be an interesting one. I'm really excited. I've never seen that either. So here we go. I, I love Tom Cruise. Oh, yay. So, so what'd you say with it? forward to it. it Damn. I don't know. My man really does not. They added stuff to it from the original, which doesn't really add up. Tom Cruise is And great. it's like really like so far not not the story itself because obviously the story itself is based on the original but like some of the side things that they added it's like a y b doesn't even make sense c no um (coughs) no talking about the The original original movie we'll We'll talk about this next week shut your goddamn i'm curious to see what i think on it Shut shut your goddamn mouth, William. We'll talk about this next week. By the way, thanks for asking. I enjoyed the show. That's this quick break. Moving on. You haven't asked! <laughs> you haven't said anything! <laughs> talk! <laughs> I'm not here to fucking make you talk. Talk, goddammit! <laughs> Okay, fine. I hate you. <laughs> Stay tuned when we come after this break <laughs> with William's new segment, Pops Corners. I hate you. Really. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome back for one of our new segments. Not new anymore, but I'm going to keep calling them new until the end of time. Pops Corners. William, take it away. We have a long list of things today. Some will be quick, some we can touch up on. Um, first things first, we lost two greats of music uh, in the oh. past 24 hours, unfortunately. Um, the first one was Johnny Nash, which for those that don't know, he's the guy that sang uh, I Can See Clearly Now, The Rain Is Gone. God, that is such a beautiful song. And we lost Eddie Van Halen to throat cancer. I did not know Van Halen had cancer. 
I didn't know either, but apparently it was a it was a long battle, and unfortunately, cancer won this one. So I wonder if he got that from like smoking. I mean, maybe. Hmm. That uh, sucks, man. Yo, I know he's been battling that for like five or six years at least, if I'm not mistaken. Van Halen will be missed, man. That man was a a legend, man. Really How good. old is he, anyways? I Young, sixty-one. He was, he was in his sixties. Yeah, sixty-one. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. Like super young. I thought he was a lot older than that. Wow. No, 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 no. He's like not old at all. Wow. Here, actually, let me, what? let me. I think Eddie Van Halen. Let me look it up. He is. He was born in '55 to. to, to here, let me, let me go on his phone. Fu- God, please. Yeah, so it was '65. Okay. No, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, sorry. He was '65, which is still not like old like you're still, it's really not it's really not so it's retirement age he just retired yeah yeah um that so sucks, now though. uh yeah they both passed away and they passed away on the same day which wow. was within like hours of each other um you know they what they say it comes in now. threes uh so comes sad, in threes. sad news for lewis uh they have pushed dune to uh november release of 2021 which yep. Brandon, I was waiting to say this on camera. You were right, my man. They ended up pushing it. So I but, it, I'm sorry, Lewis. I know you were looking forward to it, but the one that got um, butt fucked. I hope you have it. Uh, it, it. Do you have the long list of movies that got pushed? Uh, I don't. No, that was like that was like the big one. They had, oh, the other big one was um, the new Bond movie got moved to next year as well. Dude. And because of it, Regal is now closing 500 plus theaters in response um, to it. Um, the Batman so got sad. pushed back to 2022. What did? The Batman. Oh, that sucks, balls. Dude, 2022. What the? F- Dude, my man getting Rona, like uh, fucking Robert Pattinson getting Rona, the actual coronavirus, the pandemic, like just fuck that movie, dude. I didn't know that it. I didn't know he got that. Holy yeah, shit. he got. Uh, they literally started production again on the movie, like right after they showed the trailer, the first teaser, and then he tested positive for Rona, and they they had to stop production again. Yeah. Wow. But mind you, when they showed that trailer off, the movie had only been only twenty five percent of the movie had been filmed. So there's still a hot plus, chunk. Plus he got injured too. So they, they, they this thing has been like, was he? Uh, yeah, um, uh, the Batman got got injured doing a stunt. I think it was with uh, with the motorcycle. Huh. I think uh, I think the Matrix got moved up. Probably. But all the the one that's getting butt fucked is is uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah, I was actually that's actually on my list. That was next. Wonder Woman actually looks like maybe skipping a, a theatrical release and going straight to streaming. Really? Um, yep. Yep. Uh, but they had—I don't think that they pushed. Well, I mean, they already pushed the date back. Wow, this is a long ass earlier this year. But now it looks like they're trying to do it so they don't have to push the, the date back any longer. Damn, Wonder Woman 1984 is two hours and thirty-one minutes. That's—I don't know why that feels very long for for a superhero movie. I mean, after Avengers Endgame, two and a half yeah. hours is not bad. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but, it's just out of the norm. You know, I, I like two hours, okay, but like two and a half, I'm like, okay, that's that's not, not saying anything because I liked Wonder Woman a lot, the first one. That takes so, a huge commitment for, for a superhero movie for me. Staying with movies, they have officially announced Across the Universe 2 with what? the original cast. They will take place what? in the 70s. And have uh, more Beatle music. Uh, oh God, as well. no, no. So I like, <laughs> no. Like, like I'm happy that there's another movie coming out with Beatle music, but I don't think like this movie did not need a sequel. So I hope they do it justice, and there's like a really good reason to. But we um, we should like coming out with Moulin Rouge too. It's like ugh. <laughs> the Ghost of Santine. You know. Uh, uh, Across the Universe has a version of a Beatles song that I think is actually better than the original version of the there's Beatles a, song. There's a few really good songs. Uh, I've just seen a face. Yeah, mm. I just I, I like think that. their version of the that song is better than the Beatles version. I don't like their version of Strawberry Fields. Yeah, that was kind of goes dumb. like two into flat and then come back up, and I was yeah. like, 
Um, I have to see that movie again. It's been a long, long time since I've seen it. That's a good movie. Why do they really? need to do a sequel to it? Why? What? Just come on, money. come up with original money, ideas. Money, money, money. Yeah. Um, now let's see. What else do I? Have? A shame. Yeah. Shame. Uh, shame. Oh. Uh, touching on speaking of streaming and touching on streaming services, Touch Women me. of Wrestling Wow uh, has officially been canceled. Wow! They will, yeah, they were going to do a final season four to wrap everything up and everything, and because of COVID, obviously being a wrestling show or a, uh, you know a, a based on wrestling, they're like we can't film this and it's going to be too long. So Netflix officially announced the cancellation yesterday. Um, so that we will not be getting a closure on that. Wow or glow? Oh, I'm sorry, glow, not wow. I thought it was. Oh, it's like wow is Warcraft thing, right? Yeah, no, my bad. <laughs> it's like, hold on, it's glow. Like, what? Yeah, uh, wait, wait, wait. Ladies of wrestling. Sorry, sorry. So, so backtrack. Glow got canceled for what reason? For glow COVID. got canceled because they were oh, they were sorry. gonna start filming a season four, but apparently now with COVID, they could they tried to push it back at first, but they're not able to do it yet because it's still you know a thing going on and apparently there's like a lot of other projects which i mean it sucks because i would have loved to see a final season it wasn't something that was going to keep going i've never seen it but i've heard it's a good show right it really is it really and and it's based on true things because glow was a thing back in the 80s oh i didn't know it's like a made-up thing okay um Staying on Netflix, uh, Adam Sandler has a new movie, a new Halloween movie called Hubby Halloween or Hubie Halloween. I'm not sure. Yeah, who the trailer looks very Adam Sandler trailer, so and he doesn't take it so, itself seriously. You can see that it's just it's on par for Adam Sandler. So if you enjoy his kind of movies, by all means, check it out. It just dropped today, I believe. Uh, I've actually started binge watching uh, Man with a Plan on Netflix. I don't. What, which one's that one? It, it stars Matt LeBlanc. Matt LeBlanc was obviously Joey on Friends, and it's very much along the vibes of Home Improvement, um, okay. Eight Simple Rules, and uh, what's the one with uh, Tim Allen? Well, the other one with Tim Allen. Last Man Standing. Last Man Standing. I love that um, show. show. Speaking so of good. Tim Allen. The spin-up show of Home Home Improvement has officially started filming with Al Borland, which is actually going to, yeah, it's actually going to be on Al Borland, and Tim will be on it as well, but more as a side character than anything else. And for some reason, Uh it's going to air on the History Channel. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Right, Uh, but we will see how that goes. History Channel has gone the way of MTV over the last 10 years. Yeah. Another movie that got delayed uh, is the um, Jurassic World Dominion. Got delayed to 2022. A bunch of the cast members uh, tested positive for Rona. But so. you see, nobody cares about that movie. <laughs> well, they're bringing back everybody, so that's going to be cool to that's see everybody. Be, they have the original cast as well, so hopefully, yeah. you know, except for obviously Dr. Hammond. Thanks. Again, um, nobody cares about that movie. <laughs> in carrying on with weird things in pop culture. Vin Diesel, uh-huh. the Vin Diesel from Fast and Furious. He's running for president? <laughs> no. It's Please, actually God. a little worse. Well, it's worse, but it's not. He dropped his first single. <laughs> uh, it's called Feel Like I Do. You can stream it on YouTube. Why it's do I feel like this is some bad. religious music or some it's, shit? No, it's not. It's, it's actually a love song. Oh, okay. Um, it it's it's a good ballad love song. The sound mixing is not that great because like the music almost drowns him out. But he doesn't have a bad voice. Um, Auto tune is a wonderful thing. Oh no, 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 he sang live at award shows before. Oh, has he? Yeah, when Paul. I Walker can't imagine had, Vin Diesel singing like with that raspy voice that he has. I'm like, you, you would think, but like when Paul Walker passed away and at the MTV Awards, which was soon after his passing. Uh, he sang a snippet of uh, When I See You Again, which plays at the end of the last Fast Year. Mm-hmm. It's not bad. Like, he's not very white or, you know, but he's he's, he's all right. It's, it was just weird to be like, Vin Diesel has an actual single? Like, all right. Um, it's like The Rock having a, a, what do you call it, liquor line. It's like, huh? Dude, a bunch of people have liquor 
like lines. Dan Aykroyd. Like, Dan Aykroyd. Uh, fucking uh, fucking um, Darren Paul has his own tequila with fucking Brian Cranston. Yep. Deadpool like, has one too. Yes, he does. Yes, well, he does. Deadpool, but Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Oh, by the way, today on YouTube, I saw the commercial with Ryan Reynolds and Rick Moranis. Right? Oh, my God. That is Have right. you seen it, Louis? No, I haven't seen you it. You need to see it. Rick Moranis is like, why am I here? Honestly, I'm going to be here so I can fanboy over you. Yeah, it's just so funny. Like, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds is like, you have no reason to be here. I just wanted you to come on. And it was like, it's just so wholesome. Ryan Reynolds, I know I said this before. He's such a wholesome person. He seems like such a um, Speaking of Ryan Reynolds, if you go on YouTube, um, they they did a Zoom. So a new trailer for, what's it called? The Guy? Yeah, the, the Ryan Reynolds movie. Like, yeah, that he plays the NPC game. or whatever. Um, the new trailer dropped. But the day before, him and like five other cast members did a announcement. The trailer was coming. But then, like, each one takes something where it's like, uh, coming Christmas, but not the Christmas you think of. Or coming okay. Arbor Day, coming... It, it, it just keeps going because the, the movie keeps getting pushed back. Um, and the trailer actually looks good. You know, it's it's a good Ryan Reynolds-like uh, movie. So we'll dude, see he, how it goes. He's a great... Like, he's hilarious, dude. He's really funny. And uh, the, the the name of the movie is Free Guy. I feel Free like Guy. Thank you. Uh, I feel like Deadpool finally opened up what Ryan Reynolds is to the world, like his sense of humor and shit. And he is literally Deadpool personified as a fucking person. Pretty it's enough. hilarious to me. Which is great. Yeah, it's just, uh, um, that's why he chose to be in that role. He's the one that pushed to to be in that role. So it's like. When well, do you he see played, actors do that, you know? He played Deadpool before in X Men yeah. Origins and or we Wolf, don't whatever. We don't talk about no, that. Yeah, that movie's fucking no, ass. He did not. That did not happen. It was not a thing. It and is canceled. He it was, was um, like fucking Cassandra from uh, Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> what he looked like. Wow. Fucking bizarre. Okay. Um, and I haven't moisturized seen, me. <laughs> I haven't seen the, the trailer yet because it literally just dropped minutes ago. But the trailer for Fat Man. Which is the new Mel Gibson movie? Just oh, the one that he's Santa Claus. And well, the yeah, article that I'm back reading, the jokes literally, like the headline possible. is "Fat Man Trailer." Mel Gibson is a miserable Santa Claus, and Walton Goggins is the hitman trying to kill him. <coughs> so, so it's bad Santa with Mel Santa. Gibson. Um, yeah, I guess. Pretty much, but we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. Oh my lord. <laughs> Anything uh, anything else, William? SNL. Um, SNL. Most important news of the... SNL. Of the yes. If you have not seen spoke it... spoke about yeah. this. Yeah, we did, we talk, we did talk about it already because like, I don't know if... We was, I don't know well, if we just, I, was, I was wrapping up the news segment. The best news of all is SNL. Um, so if you haven't seen it, uh, the SNL is back live. The uh, what? Their first host SNL is back live. That's what he said. Okay. Um, the host was Chris Rock. Yeah, which... we, we, we we already talked about this. Deja yeah, vu. Didn't, didn't you say SNL though? Yes, I did. Chris okay. Rock is also I'm, I'm on. Reiterating, Chris Rock is also on Fargo, the show. Huh? Yeah. Really? Yes, he is the main. Or again, I don't watch the show, but from what I've seen of the trailers, like the ads that I see. He looks as if he's the main character of the newest season of Fargo. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Why? What? Wow. Chris Rock <laughs> used to be gold, and now he, he's down downgraded to Fargo TV series. Yikes. Fargo TV series, Fargo I heard, is actually really show. fucking like, good. I'm not in it, but it's not, it's not a bad show. Just because you don't like the movie, Lewis, does not you mean You go from it's... being an apostle to being in Fargo. Come on. That just means that he's so secure that he doesn't need to make million, multi-million dollar paychecks and movies, but he's like, I got the money. I still got like the money coming in from those movies. I can go and do something else that's more low-key. Why the hell not? It's not like he's like in between jobs or whatnot. That, that's like saying, oh, Jim Carrey fell from, you know, fell from the heavens True. because now he's doing a show on Showtime. It's a good show. If the show's good and they want to be part of it, for all you know, he just wanted to be part of Fargo because he likes it. And it's like, sure, why not? Come on on. 
Um, yep. But I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how he does. It was a simple no. joke. No, it's not a joke. Fuck it off. No, it was. No, no, it was a no, joke. No, it was a joke. No. That boy. It was not a joke. Do not trump this. Do not like, <laughs> say something and it backfires, and all of a sudden you're like, "I was being sarcastic." It was a joke. No, shut up, man. <laughs> shut up, man. Sorry. Don't trump. Don't ever trump. All right. Uh, I'll I'll know. Know. <laughs> uh, stay tuned after this quick break when we come at you stay live. Fun. Sorry, you're done, right, with your segment, William? I'm sorry. Well, I mean, I am now because you're wrapping up, so sure. No, no, no. Go ahead. As he chugs a two liter. <laughs> Are you done for real? No, no, no. I'm actually asking. I'm sorry. I gotta... Yeah, I am done. Fuck okay, you guys. Cool. I am so done. Bye. Yes. <laughs> All right. Now, stay tuned at this quick break when we come at you live with uh, the main segment of our show, the main review, my pick, the platform. La plataforma. No, it's actually called El Oyo in Spanish. All right, guys, welcome back for the main seminar show, the main review, my pick. I fucked up. <laughs> uh, so I fucked up twice. Um, <laughs> and then Lewis fucked up. So Lewis didn't put up the poll f- to vote. Uh, what? The, the, I bit you in the ass real fast. Yeah. The the choices were the platform and well, Emily. I really want to get out, like, not get out of it, but, like, come out of it unscathed. Lewis fucked up twice. Because not only did he not put up the poll, as a producer, he should have been like, uh, we reviewed this already, so we need to pick <laughs> something else. And it can't be something that it, it is going to be a yes. choice. So, so Lewis, I'm innocent in all this, but somehow it's going to come back and bite me in the ass. Lewis came right. back at Fuck me you, and boy. told me that he didn't do the poll. So he told me, just pick a movie. So I picked Emily. I went on Netflix like two days ago. They had taken Emily off. <laughs> I was like, well, okay. That was fucked. great. Uh, That's why I wait till Tuesday to watch our main review because yeah. I'm like, I would have been so pissed if I sat and watched that movie and then he was like, uh, we're doing the platform because he got pulled 24 hours before show. <laughs> no, I must have gotten, I don't know when it got pulled, but yeah, so I was like, okay, let's do the platform. So then, Lewis, um, I find out right before we start recording this <laughs> segment that uh, he had reviewed it back when it came out in March uh, as an individual review, and we were still doing those, and I had totally forgotten. So but anyways... Now we could watch it. We could discuss it all together. Okay. So the platform... Spoiler played it. The platform is uh, a... Okay, so people are put in this tower for doing crimes, or you could do, you could go there by your own accord for whatever reason. Um, to to redeem, uh, like a, a what do you call it, a, a debt prize. or anything like that. Yeah, something. So the 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 main character is trying to get an accredited uh, diploma. So um, you're put in a room. It's you and another person. All you have in that room is two beds, a sink, a a, a shitter, a, a toilet. And then there's a hole in the ceiling that leads to the room above you and a hole in the floor that leads to the floor below you. And every time at a certain point of the day, this platform descends and it has food on it. And you can eat as much food as you possibly can in the duration that that platform is in your room. You cannot keep any food in your in your room because they will lower or raise the temperature to a point where you will die. Now, the problem is, is that the people at the top can eat the lower you get, it gets worse and worse and worse. Yep. And every month, they gas everybody in the tower, and they randomly put them on another floor. So Musical like, chairs, tower. Yeah, to, to give you an example, you might be in floor six, but then the next month, you might be on floor 200. So, um, yeah, uh, it's a Spanish movie. Uh I think it's a social commentary. I think honestly, it's a social commentary about how society we 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 allow ourselves to to gain all these possessions and stuff like that, and by owning these possessions, we think that we're masters of the universe because we have everything that we ever wanted, quote unquote. The very much like Fight Club um, Mm -hmm. mentality, where where you know these possessions are what make us uh, better people, and this kind of turns that on the head and says, look, this is human nature. And 
if you if only people would allow and only grab just enough food to feed your hold your stomach and your mm-hmm. hunger until the next feeding then everybody down the the platform line should have enough quote unquote quote unquote um and at least you would be under the assumption that you'd be able to feed a lot more people than the entire time i was watching this movie from the beginning i was like this reminds me so much of Snowpiercer. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. a Spanish version and not on a train. <laughs> I, have you ever seen Cube? No, I don't think I have. Or The Circle? No. Those, yes! Those two are very similar movies that to movie's this. That fucked up. I love the those movies. Or the, yeah. Yeah. the Circle. That's still streaming on Netflix. Yeah. Okay. The oh, Circle shit, and Cube, the whole series of Cube is freaking great. It's very similar to this, but it, it's kind of like traps. So imagine this movie makes a saw. That that's what cubed is. Okay. And it it just it's very much social commentary. What do humans do? How would you react in a situation like this? What perfect example? What would you guys take with you to the platform? Um, definitely not a book. <laughs> definitely not Don Quixote even though you know that's a, a banger of a book um, William, what would you do I'd bring my phone so I can watch porn <laughs> <laughs> I, I would bring like a book that teaches you how to make rope I like I like the, the old band Samurai Plus <laughs> Samurai Plus. Now, did you guys watch it in Spanish or in English? Yeah, fuck yeah, I watched it in Spanish, bro. Right? Did you watch Hell- it in Spanish? No. <laughs> I, okay, so I watched most of it in English. I watched the ending in English. Okay. I would hop in between <laughs> during like regular scenes just to try like get some Spanish in there. But if I felt like it was like an important thing that was happening, mm-hmm. I would go to English just to make sure that I totally understood what the fuck was going on. Because sometimes the caption does not fucking match what they're fucking saying. Because like, yeah, there was like Italian movies and French movies. No, there were some that, that it and didn't I'm matter. like, this is not what the fuck they just said in French. Like they just, oh, it was with uh, with cuties when I when I did that, and I was like. Wait, that's not what they just said. The caption's completely wrong. So I do, I'm, but I, I don't trust it. I think that's just a translation. Like sometimes you can't translate something word for word to English. So you kind of do something like, okay, this is as close as I can get it. Yeah. Um, like sana sana culito de rana. I remember yeah. I saw that translated once and I was like, yeah. Oh, it's that's like, fucking hilarious. Heel, heel, frog's ass. It's like, what? <laughs> um, no, I, and and it's funny. Like I would get stuff because, of course, um, Lewis and I and and William to a certain extent speak Spanish, um, but they speak a Spanish that is just not what you and I speak, Lewis. Uh, Cuban Spanish is definitely nowhere near. Castellano. Yeah, they speak proper Spanish. It's Castellano. Which, yeah. Which, so I mean, it's... even even in Spain, there's like I think four different dialects. In Spain itself, is like, that's adorable. Four dialects. Go to Italy and try to speak Italian in different places, dude. Oh, I want to die no, but there's like, uh, what was it? The the freaking, um, oh my god, Los Gallegos, dude. Oh you yeah, can't no, understand yeah. shit that they're well, saying. I don't think they speak Spanish. It's like a, a it's weird... a mix of yeah. German with like Mus with uh, Arabic. It's fucking bizarre. Yeah, it's it's it, weird. Dude, it, it is beyond like what? Yeah, <laughs> but uh, gotta, but this yeah, one's it's... Castellano. This one's proper Castellano. It's it's like I also like when the old man is like obvio for everything. Yeah, <laughs> obviamente, obvio. And I'm just like old man, stop saying that. And then it comes up the the guy's like stop saying obviously so much. <laughs> but honest, I don't know what I would bring. Um, the I'd bring the... a dog. The Samurai Plus is smart because you can defend yourself. Because at the end of the day, you don't know who's in that room with you. Uh, as you can see in the, some of the later scenes when... Um, what's the girl's name? Himura? Himura? Yeah. No? Oh, my God. That is the best part of the movie. Uh, like, when she is... When they find her and she's, like, attacking those two dudes and they're fighting her and shit. Like, you know who these fucking people are. Oh, I love when the black guy gets shit on. 
uh, like when he's like trying to like climb the rope and they just poop in his face. <laughs> it, it, I just fast forward at that because I, I I don't do puking puking shit. You know, I was just no. But you barely see it. It literally goes poop and it yeah, just but, falls. But still, it's like mm, no. I, I love I love how this movie kind of progresses slowly. Honestly, it's very slow, but in a it, good way. I wouldn't say it's badly. It progresses hate. slowly in for for an intent. It, yes. It, it dissolves you. It absorbs you into the movie by doing that. The piecing of this is very deliberate. The The coloring scheme is very deliberate. Mm-hmm. I love, love the cinematography and the editing on this. It's fucking superb. Um, it definitely feels like you're kind of losing your mind with him. Yeah. Um, specifically when um are we going into spoilers or no well if we do we got to give a huge warning on this because not a lot of people have seen this um so definitely spoilers ahead if you guys don't want to hear spoilers skip ahead a little bit spoilers um okay so when um when he kills the well yeah when he kills the old man and then starts like eating him to survive and then and then later on when he starts eating the lady uh who has uh killed herself like you i wonder if that's like the 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 director's like way of like you know how um you're not supposed to eat human meat because it has like a chemical in it that makes you go fucking insane yeah i wonder if that's like his way like his like artistic way of showing like that's what's happening to the main character that he's just going fucking mad um because he's consumed two fucking human beings in the course of a couple months <laughs> to survive. Um, it's it's great. Like, just how it's done, too. Like, it feels I like love... you're just in this fever dream with him, like, in the like, exactly. that room. Um, and he's just there, like, trying to eat and, and stay alive. Because, you know, when you get to those points where you're, like, in a floor where, like, no food comes down. Dude. Like, that shit is desolate. The way that they portray that, it is yeah. fucking. You feel it like you're in that scene in that yeah. moment. It's incredible. Yeah, it's like it comes down and it's just glass. There's like it's just the containers and the plates and stuff <sighs> like that. It's just like nothing. This is definitely in the top five movies of the year so far, which I isn't saying much, but it I, it's really fucking good. I liked it. My problem was it just it felt so close to Snowpiercer. It felt like too close of a concept. I, the cops, the concept's been done a million times. It's just the original. The original idea comes in the fact of the platform that they're they're using as a as a tool of storytelling. Yeah, and I think that was really well done. That was a very fascinating story because it it kind of like lets you know like look. If you give humans the chance, they will they will gorge themselves. Yeah, oh yeah. Stupid. Instead of respecting the people below them, they're Dude, it's, always going to gorge. It's like the old man. Like you see him eating, and then like he throws the piece, and like he'll spit like yeah. down in the hole. Like as the, the the platform is descending, you're just like you're just like ew, you nasty bastard. Um. So yeah, it's just to oh one thing I wanted to bring up so. Towards the end of the movie, the main character meets this, um, the black guy that I was talking about that gets pooped on his face. And they come across another black guy that he knows that is in a wheelchair. When he spoke Spanish, it threw me off so fucking hard that, William, you won't be able to answer this because you didn't see it in Spanish. Were they just trying to make somebody that does not speak Spanish speak Spanish? Because the way that guy spoke was just fucking weird. It sounded I think it as was his... more. It was uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, an actual disability, rather than was it? Yeah, I think it was more a disability rather than a person actually hmm. not knowing Spanish. Hmm. I think he had a condition where where he talked kind of funky. I I get that. I see where you're. Yeah, talking yeah, about. and and if he did, hap- I mean, it happens to a lot of people that don't speak a language and are trying to speak a language. Yeah. The... <laughs> Oh my god! No, again, if if he did have a disability, I'm not trying to like make fun of that or anything. It just when he came out, it was jarring. It it literally looked as if they were trying to make somebody that did not speak that language try to speak it as coherently as they possibly could. 
and it sounded fine. It just sounded like he had a very heavy accent compared to all the other actors in the movie. Yeah. He had a very heavy accent in the way that of someone that just does not speak that language. Yeah, I could see that. And I was like, I just thought that it was from one of the other provinces. I was like, okay, he's just probably somewhere else. No, like, I don't know. Like, even the other guy, like, the other black guy, like, he spoke Spanish, like, super fluent. Like, you could tell he was from Spain. And so was the main character and the old man and everybody else. But then when he came out, I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) It was just so jarring. I don't know. Maybe I I watch a lot of, like, uh, movies and stuff like that from Spain, and I there's a lot of moments where they speak like kind of a weird Spanish and it's like, all right, you just get past it and move on. And it's like, so that's why I thought it was just a province thing. I was like, all right, cool, whatever. So fun, fun little thing. Each character is named after something. So the main character, his name is Goreng, which means fried in Malaysian or Indonesian. Um, Hmm. The old guy, the old man is called Trimagasi. He's named after Terima Kasi, which stands for thank you in Malaysia and in Indonesian language. Then we have the lady that kills herself, uh, Imogiri, uh, Royal J- Javanese Cemetery in Indonesia. Hmm. And then we have Baharat, which is the black guy, which means spice in Arabic used in Middle Eastern, Turkish, and Greek cuisines. Huh. That's cool. It's like things like that yeah see everybody sounds super and then eric l good as senior brambang that's the the guy in the wheelchair Hmm. yeah other than that i liked it um it's cool to see these movies from like other countries that are you know these cool concepts and stuff like that it just it caught my eye on netflix when i saw it on what'd you think of the ending um were you satisfied with the ending Yes and no. I wanted him to actually speak or see the people at the top, like the people cooking and stuff like that. Um, but did you think he actually made it? No, I think he dies down there. Yeah. Okay. I think. Did you think he dies down there? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Like when he when he gets off the platform and he starts talking to the old man, I'm like, this motherfucker's gonna die down here. Yeah. Like he was just like, this is it. This hallucinating moment at the end. Yeah, like that. This is just his moment of like he's accepted his fate. He's just talking to this hallucination of this old man at this point. Was it a hallucination or was it a moment of lucidity where he realizes he's going to die? Maybe, but but then like, what are the other moments throughout the entire movie when he talks to the little man and the, the lady? Yeah. I just think that as the movie progresses, he just keeps getting crazier and crazier, and then he has the moment of sanity when he meets Baharat and then so basically then, he he finds his his uh what do you call it um uh, uh Pancho Villa and he's facing yes. the windmill what that's actually a good point maybe this movie is very like he is Sancho Panza and Baharat is you know uh Banfilo you know yeah that's what I'm saying. Know. Like it's 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 a perfect analogy of it. I mean, there's a perfect modern interpretation of that, using yeah. it as kind of a background. Um, it's the same story. It's a man chasing a dream of equality True. and where humanity is actually able to 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 be good to each other, and that yeah. dream isn't a realistic dream. Yeah. In our modern society, people are just terrible to each other. Um. One last thing before, or or William, do you want to bring up anything? Do you want to say anything about the movie? No, I mean, like, I liked it. I was entertained by it. It's, mm-hmm. like I said, it's a little bit of a slow burn, but it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely recommend it if you're looking for something a little bit different. And um, even kind of like, like, you know, like we're sitting here wondering how the end really, what the end really is. So it's definitely stimulating and it makes you wonder at the end it's not one of those clear cut like oh okay he dies or oh okay he lives or whatever it may be um i mean like i give it a good like nine out of ten um by the way this is the director's first movie yeah yeah this is a 9.5 for me honestly um yeah it's something brandon i definitely recommend you watching it again really it's a really good watch a second time you start noticing little nuances that you don't pick up on the first view 
Hmm. And it it gets better with each time you watch this. This would be the third time I've watched this. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. My, uh, I'd also give it a nine. My entire thing was, um, what happens when that platform goes up? That little girl's just gonna like get fucking stuck to the platform as it's like racing up, but like, God knows whatever speed it goes at, like. You know how it goes up every night? I would, I would love to be on, on that ride. Dude, the little girl's just right? like... <laughs> well, imagine it just goes up to, to the thing, and that's where the, they put the food. So it's going to be like they're waiting to place all the food on the on the platform, and they see a little girl come up, and they're like, oh. No, but I'm just saying like the G-force <laughs> of that fucking or whatever, the, 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 the force of like gravity just like throwing her down as this fucking platform is just skyrocketing up. It would be like, like, mission, to, be like mission to Mars at uh, Epcot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But honestly, and when it stops, all you see is boop. yeah, just yeah, <laughs> she splatters the ceiling. That's like right there. Honestly, nine. I give it a nine. Um, it it caught me by surprise. I didn't think I was gonna like it this much. Um, my only gripe mm-hmm. with it, and I guess it's a very small gripe, is it just feels a lot like Snowpiercer, and that's not anything bad. Snowpiercer is also a really fucking great movie. So. And yeah. can you imagine cooking all that food every fucking day? God, that must suck. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't bring this up in my segment. I am so sorry. Um, yeah, uh, you said Snowpiercer, I thought Chris Evans, and Chris Evans took to Twitter because he is beyond pissed. Um, Rick oh, Moranis the- was actually assaulted in New York City. Oh, yes, I heard about this. Week, randomly walking down the street and this guy just turned around and sucker punched him and kept then just kept running off and it's like what the fuck and Chris the Chris Evans fucking took to Twitter where he's like my blood is boiling and you know you don't touch with Morenas. Hell no you don't. Um I don't know, I guess the guy was mad that he shrunk the kids or something. I don't fucking know. Or maybe he didn't like space balls. But he it, it was like why why? Like I mean obviously yeah. Incident yeah. as Rick Moranis, it could have been anybody at all, but like, don't do stupid shit like that. Like, seriously, because now, like, the entire country is after your ass. So, come on. all right, on that note, uh, that. stay tuned out this quick break when we come at you with my segment. <laughs> all right, guys, welcome back for my segment, Brandon's Joystick. This is where I talk about video games and anime or whatever I want. But we're going to stick to video games. So um, I beat Dead Space for the first time. That was something exciting. That game was incredible. I need to play the second one. I'm not going to touch the third one of the fucking 10 foot bowl. Um, I did start Bioshock. Like I told you guys that I was going to do last week. Isn't that intro just fucking glorious? Oh, yeah. Um, That entire sequence when you get into the lighthouse and the bathosphere and then that the video starts playing. And then, and then it's like everything leads into rapture, and just like you see the fucking squid in the city. It's just like holy, dude! All roads fuck. lead to rapture. Fucking yeah. love yeah. that music. Yeah, dude. If, like if you enjoyed that one, imagine it with the graphics being even better and just like going up into the sky instead. Oh of- yeah, no, I I've played that one. The one I don't like is two. Two could suck a fat oh, fucking you cock. Played Infinite? I've played Infinite. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought you said last week you hadn't played any of the Bioshocks. No, 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 no. I've played 1, 2, and 3. I've beaten 1 and 3, so 1 and infinite. I've tried to beat 2, but the god, if there is a god, I think he's giving me signs because every time I tried to play that game as a kid, as a teenager when I had it on the PS3, something would happen. My mom would touch the eject button and I hadn't saved, and it got to a point where I was just like, okay. I don't want to play this game anymore. Uh, but the original, I actually got and Xbox 360 because of the original Bioshock. That's how much... I remember I saw it at Lewis's place when he with his old-ass roommate, John. Um, and I just was just blown away. I was like, this looks incredible. Yeah. Um, was, I love Bioshock wasn't an, was an exclusive, though, right? Yes, it was. It was. Oh, it, it was, was an Xbox exclusive to start oh, with? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes, it the was. First, okay, yeah, the right. first one. Yeah, the first no, no. It eventually it, it stopped being an exclusive for, but for a while it was. And what's crazy is I'm now playing it on a PC. I'm playing Bioshock Remastered, which came out like two or three years ago on yep. a PC. This shit looks. 
dear god it, it looks so good they Just have a really actually good graphics updated the the audio setting on it so it is actually 7.1 surround sound that Dude. shit is epic i'm <laughs> i'm the kind of games that could not play surround sound because like i i don't know just something about like especially like with the voices and like you know everything. and the little girls when they start oh, singing like, I would literally die every minute because, like, the moment something comes up from behind me in the speaker, my ass is turning around and it's probably killing me on screen. So, my like, one of my f- all time favorite scenes that it has never left me for some odd reason is the first time you pick up the shotgun and the oh. lights go out. And then, like, all your like them running around you and you're just like looking around, like, where the fuck are they coming? And then the lights turn on and there's just a splicer coming straight at you. It's just such an interesting story, an interesting concept of great characters too. City dude, being underwater, splicing. yeah, great characters, characters that you don't even meet, but yeah. through the audio diaries, you get to oh. learn who these people are and the the inner workings of Rapture and who is with who and who doesn't like who and and little things that I catch every time that I play. Bioshock, would you kindly? Yeah. Every time I hear Atlas say that, um, fuck you. It's been long enough. I'm. I'll just. I'll spoil it. Like the whole. Um, oh the no! Whole... Don't give away like the full ending because I. No 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 no. Well, okay. I guess, okay, I, mean, I, like, I, guess I guess by now, if you do, even if you even played it. If you don't know what it is, then you're just living underneath a rock. Yeah, exactly. That's why. So, spoilers for Bioshock 1. If you haven't played it, stop listening. Could you kindly oh. tell us what it is? Exactly. <laughs> Every time you hear Atlas say, would you kindly, it's just so interesting because if you've played the game and you don't remember, every time Atlas slash Fontaine tells you, would you kindly, you have to do it. Like, literally, you have to do it. it. So, it's just really interesting to hear him say shit like that. And, um, such a fucking, such a fantastic. I'm playing it on hard, and that game is so fucking hard. It really is. That and insane. <laughs> I haven't played was... insane yet, but I'm playing on hard. Holy fuck. Um, like, every time I would go, cause, okay, so I'm trying to kill all the big daddies in every area, and I'm trying to save the little, the little sisters. I'm not trying to kill them. So, I, went I always up the, killed the little bitches. <laughs> I went up against the the first like big daddy, and he fucking rocked my world, dude. Rocked me, and then it's so like whatever. I beat him. I got into the next area, and I got the gr- the rocket launcher, the grenade launcher. I was like, yes, and I was like, fuck. There's two more big daddies I need to fight. Mm-hmm. I come out of a doorway, and they're fighting each other, and I was like. And I started shooting them, and I was like, "Yes, you stupid fucks!" Ah, uh, and I killed both of them for the price of one. It was incredible. Such a, <laughs> such a phenomenal game. Um, I might replay Infinite. Infinite also has things that, um, little tidbits. Uh, I don't know how many times you've played that game, William, but the nice. twins, when they talk about Booker, and they talk about like. Oh, this was different than last time and shit like that. And like, oh, he's gonna do this, and then he's like, no, he, no, he's not. Things like that. It's so crazy. What I really need to play, and I, I've never played it, and I don't know if you have. Infinite has a DLC that takes place in Rapture. It has a what? A yes, DLC. I played it because I what is played that? it when it was well Wait. for a, um, PlayStation Plus had the Bioshock Infinite package oh, okay. for one month. And it was all three games plus all the DLC. So, so oh, downloadable. Yeah, uh, downloadable content. So okay. there's this was a single player. It was two parts uh, to Bioshock Infinite. Um, I forgot what it's called, but it was basically where Elizabeth plays a woman in Rapture. Oh. Um, so I've never played it. I've never played that specifically, that DLC. So I need to get back on it. But other than Bioshock, which I'm having a great time playing, uh, I was telling the boys off air that I last week bought Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. Awesome game. So 
Earlier this year, I bought on PC the... I'm sorry, real quick, before we yeah. move on, it's called Burial at Sea. Bur- Thank you, Burial at Sea. Um, so earlier this year, I right after I played The Last of Us Part 2, I kind of wanted to cleanse my palate. Um, so I bought on PC for, I think, $5. I bought the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, which was a remake of Crash 1, 2, and 3 that had come out like three years ago awesome i put like 20 hours i beat the shit out of three all three of them and there's a bunch of sequels after that those three games but the same developers of the insane trilogy toys for toys for bobs i think it is uh crash Four. yeah toys for bobs toys for bob not plural uh decided we're going to retcon all the other Crash games since 3 that came out like in 99. And this is going to be a true sequel to that one. So we get Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. The game has a lot. It has over 100 levels. Jesus. It is insane, dude. Uh, so you have all... There are 43 story missions. All those missions have an inverted mode where they flip everything. They flip, like, so imagine they, they, they get the map and they flip it around. Um, you so are, have, you, are you still running away from the player or are you... F- no, 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 you're, you're running away from the player. It's just oh, everything okay. is reverse. So, like, if a box was to your left, it'll be on your right now. Oh, okay. Things like that. Um, and really also the art style is a little different. Now? Huh? Does it really make it that much harder? Being no, hard? it doesn't. It just, it's oh, okay. cool. It adds stuff. Um... The game is really fun. It's cute. Uh, they also make nods to how many sequels there were to Crash. Because uh, as you, if, you, if you're into Crash, the bad guy is Neil Cortex, the guy with the N on his head. Um, he comes out, of course, he's the bad guy in this game. And there's a mask that asks Crash and his sister... Um, fuck, I just forgot her name. Coco. Uh, how many times they fought him. And she's like three. And he's like... Hmm, that's funny. It seems like a lot more to me. And it's just like little <laughs> nods like that that's just funny and it's clever and it's fucking hard as fuck, dude. It is so goddamn hard. They like did not pull their punches toys for Bob. Like they did not dude, I beat it today and the la- the level before the final level, which the final level is just a boss fight. I died 47 times. <laughs> 47 times. It's it's made like the the levels the, the some of the later levels are made to be learned so it becomes like muscle memory. But honestly man, if you're if you're into crash or you or you've never played crash or you're into um platforming games like Mario, give crash a a shot. Uh, buy the uh, the insane trilogy. It's three fucking games, and you it's like less than like a full game. It's like thirty bucks, probably forty bucks. Crash Bandicoot is the game that where I came up with the name Dick Bitch. Um, because Dick Bitch, Dick Bitch, literally oh. just Dick Bitch, like almost like one word, and that's because I like, like you. I was stuck on a level and just kept fucking dying, and I wanted to say. Oh my god, you fucking dick. But I also wanted to say, oh my god, what a bitch. And it just came up with, oh my god, what a dick bitch. <laughs> and my friend looked at me and went, what'd you say? And I stopped. I'm like, dick bitch? All right, it's a word. <laughs> um, and I've used it ever since. I'm like, stop being a dick bitch. It's, um, just really, it's, it's really cool before I end my segment. They also had like a bunch of like cool like gameplay things. Like They added four masks. Like um, Aku Aku, like the the main mask, the one that like you, if you get hit, like if you have it and you get hit, you don't die immediately. There's four other masks. One of them is like you can phase in and out like these like boxes or platforms that are like blue that like are see through, and if you phase them in, you can hit them or stand on them. There's another one. Yeah, plataformas. Plataforma. There's there's a, a purple one that like literally. Obviamente. You spin and like you can jump like really high and kind of like float. There's another one where you flip yourself, like a 
it inverts the gravity so you can either be on the roof or the the floor and then the last one is it slows down time it's really cool um it came out last week honestly dude if you're into platforming and you you like crash or not like i think it's it's well worth a shot i had a blast playing it even dying 47 times <laughs> <a> level <laughs> um so yeah that's that's pretty much all i've been playing and then um yeah I'll, also i'm on episode 234 of one piece i'm getting there but baby <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting there all right uh so i'm probably gonna continue playing crash and then continue bioshock and i might get dead space too i'm trying to play all crash i did but like i want to get like the the fucking gems like the hidden gems i'm just having a good time with it um so yeah play some more spoopy games since uh, we're in the month of halloween and uh, we'll get back to you guys yes all right so stay tuned that's a quick break we'll come at you with lewis's segment bald box Bald bitch. Bald bitch? Bald Bald box, you mean. Bald bitch. Alright, guys. Welcome back for the final segment of our show. Lewis's new segment, Bald Box. Bald bitch, bald box. (laughs) That's right. Um, This week, I was able to to rent another movie. It's called Ava. Um... Basically, don't watch it. It is Ava. Yeah, How do you spell this. It's A V A, I believe. It's a new movie that just came out, and it's supposed to be still in theaters as well. Oh, is it Jessica uh, Chastain? Dude, the movie is unwatchable. <laughs> unwatchable. It it feels like a straight to video movie. So please do not watch. Uh, instead, I decided to to. Do a little throwback, and it is on Redbox, and it's not streaming anywhere, so I was kind of like, all right, cool. Let's grab it and go. Bad Boys for Life. (laughs) Fuck to the yes. Is this the newest one? Yes. This is such a fun watch. It's a great way to hopefully end the series of Bad Boys. You know they're Uh, not going to end it. They're They're going to continue going. Huh? What you saying? They're making a fourth one. Oh, fuck off. Did you not see the ending? You said you saw like the ending scene, right? Yeah. That they're making a fourth one. Yeah, I mean, it, they they always left it like that, though. No, they sealed. They closed up the other ones. They didn't have a to be continued scene. It was done, and then we were surprised with. We didn't know we were getting a Bad Boys two, let alone a Bad Boys three. But now they're like, oh, we can cash in on this. It made millions in profits. They're definitely making a fourth one. Well, I, honestly, I like the way that that uh, Martin Lawrence and and Will Smith interact. The, this is like the epitome of the buddy cop movies. Uh, if you don't know what Bad Boys is, what the fuck is wrong with you? And <laughs> it's honestly just more of that. It's ma- more of the Bad Boy, the the what do you call it, franchise. It's nothing new. It's nothing. It's them hating each other, but loving each other at the same time and just cursing each other out constantly. Oh my god. Some of the shit that Basically. they... Their interactions are just so fucking brilliant. <laughs> Brandon, have you seen it? The new one? I have not seen the new one, no. Okay. Well, I I, honestly, like I, I just thought it was a fun ride. It shows off some cool scenes in <laughs> Miami, some cool areas in Miami, and I, I just... I, I love it. I, I don't know. I, I think it was a fun uh, moment if you're in for like a blockbuster movie or something like that. They want to turn up the popcorn and just blast the, the fucking uh, surround sound system. It's a great one to do. Uh, and, William, what do you think of it? Because I know you saw it. Okay. So like overall, I enjoyed it. it. It was a good popcorn movie. It was a good action movie. Um, I mean, that's what you expect. Num- number two was a lot like number two is still my favorite i think it's the best one in the trilogy right now i felt like this one um there's a lot of fan service uh, yeah. a lot of throwbacks i did like the fact that they touch up on the whole reggie thing from the second one <laughs> which i'm not spoiling on what happened but they do touch up on it which i thought was like really oh cute. my god that's funny that was to me that was my favorite fan service moment of the entire movie um that and the rats the, they mentioned the rats remember the rats. Um, but 
I don't buy the whole, and, I, and I'm trying not to give it away because people have not seen it. And I really don't want to spoil it, but like the whole twist, and then all of a sudden everything gets flipped around and everything's okay. I'm like, I don't buy that. Like it doesn't, like it doesn't happen like that. Even like, I mean, granted, it's always been like over the top and oh, not like, believable. But that's just like way. That's like really far fetched as to like what happens, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, you're okay with this? Like, no. Like mm-mm. Cubans, Cubans call those type of uh, type of movies un paquete. It's basically yeah. like uh, extravagant movies that are kind of like so far fetched that there's no fucking way that people could do it. Like like a uh, Fast and the Furious um, moving their their freaking cars out of a plane. That yeah, kind yeah. Of it, yeah, it, it's just it's not actually because I because like I watched like there's this uh, series of videos on um, Netflix which is like CGI people watch good and bad CGI. Oh yeah, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. like stunt people that are you know part of the show in the military, and they've actually proven that the whole <laughs> cars being coming out of a plane with the parachutes is actually doable and it's actually a thing. Oh, it is. Um, it but is, but like, I mean, come on. Who the fuck's going to do that? Building, that's not doable. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, also, with Bad Boys 3, another thing that I watch is Everything Wrong With, and they have Everything Wrong With Bad Boys 3. It is hysterical. Watch it. It's funny. Um, but, I mean, overall, I enjoyed it. Like I said, it, it's... Best part of the movie, though. Best part of the movie is Captain Howard. Uh, what do you call it? Joe Pante, Panteleano? Yeah. Dude, he is fucking brilliant. Like <laughs> he, he is. And I and I I'm not giving away, like, I was not happy with, with, with his arc. Um, I wasn't either, but oh my god, the moments in the in the movie were fucking his moments have, have always been great. Like he's like, <laughs> like especially the second one, like again, going back to the second one where he's like yelling at them for like blowing up half the city. <laughs> And he's like, oh, no, see, that wasn't us. That was DEA right there. It's a car, like, explodes off, like, on a camera <laughs> and whatnot. Um, I think the order that I like them, though, I think I would probably go two, one, and three. Uh, I would say the same. It's, like, it, it, it's not like it feels forced, but they don't have the same, like, almost organic chemistry that you can feel in the second one. I think the problem is, is that the second one was such a high note that it's very hard to top that. And it you're was. talking about a movie that's a 9.5 for me, jumping to this one that I would probably give like maybe a 7, 6.5. It's I fine. It. it was still... I, I think that they tried to go too much back on fan service and callbacks from the second one especially. And, and if you're a fan of the yeah. first, it definitely touches but it touches on the first. But it, it almost feels like, oh, they like the second and they like that formula. So... We're going to try to do the same exact thing. And it just doesn't work that way. It doesn't, yeah. you know. And then obviously Michael Bay has to have his little cameo in it because Michael Bay has to Michael Bay. But he didn't direct this one. He didn't. He produced it, though. Yeah. But, you know, anything that Michael Bay touches, he has to be in it. And you could tell it's a lot less explosions than Michael Bay movies. Oh, okay. And lens flares. Yeah. You know, <laughs> well, flares. I think lens flares is more, more J.J. Abrams anyway. No, 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 no. Oh, what do you call it? Uh, what do you call it? This fuckface does like all Fuck. kinds of. <laughs> Michael Bay does lens flares more than anybody else, but he does that that orange glow lens flare. Uh, J.J. Abrams does the blue lens flares. Do you, do you have a favorite Michael Bay movie, by the way? The Rock. Same. By far, The Rock. I love that fucking movie, and that fight me, but I I think that's that's probably. Top 100 movies of all time worthy. Damn, okay. Settle yeah. down. All right. No, the, the Rock is great. I wish that it would stream somewhere because I would go hell and water. Like when it's like when it was my choice, I would make I, I would put that up against the crappiest movie ever just so that that movie wins so we can <laughs> review it. But it's <laughs> not streaming anywhere right now. So it's like, fuck. Like even Armageddon is really fucking good. Um, Armageddon was like Armageddon is one of my favorite uh, disaster movies. I just can't oh. take that fucking movie seriously. Just I mean, with the, I mean, with the animal the crackers. crackers. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's his name? Oh my god, I just had his name. Ben Affleck? Oh, no, 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 no. 
Steve Buscemi is one of my favorite characters. Steve Buscemi. <laughs> oh my god, he's great in that movie. Where he's like, "We're not gonna, we're not leaving. We're gonna die here. I had a beautiful place picked out on the rock for the end of the world." <laughs> when they walk in, it's like, um, "Can you stop writing the nuclear warhead?" <laughs> I love that fucking throwback to Doctor Strange Love. I love and that was actually uh if you listen to the behind the scenes, there's actually a Criterion collection of Armageddon. Are you and, fucking serious? Oh yeah, and The Rock too. Oh my god. And oh my god, the audio commentary is glorious because uh Buscemi is like Oh, yeah, Michael Bay didn't want me to do that. But I was like, you know what? I don't care. This is a classic movie nod. I will do it. And Michael Bay liked it so much that he, he just kept it in the movie. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, All right. Um, and then Pearl Harbor has 30 minutes of goodness. Everything else is shit. But 30 yeah. minutes of just gloriousness. <sighs> Pearl Harbor's crap. I mean, the, the, to me, it's like the attack. Well, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. 30 minutes. That's it. The, 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 the jobs are coming. <laughs> oh, no, actually, actually, it's funny because uh, that actor reminded me I wanted to uh, what I wanted to bring up and I completely fucking forgot. Um, that was better too. Red, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> doing Pearl Harbor, the sequel. No. Um, Red in Pearl Harbor is also in Black Hawk Down, which yes. the yes. Uh, anniversary of that mission uh, yes. 1983 just went by this past October 3rd, October 4th. Mm-hmm. Black Hawk Down is one of my favorite army war or, or, or war uh, movies. We, we reviewed it here one uh, not that long ago, right? Like uh, a year I ago? believe we did. But yeah. you know what I found out last week? Um, oh my god, what's his name from Venom? He, uh, Ed Hardy? Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy? Tom Hardy. Not Ed Hardy. Ed Hardy's the guy with the fucking clothes. <laughs> Tom Hardy is in Black Hawk Down. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, dude. Yeah, yeah. I did not know that up until recently because I was looking like at Tom Hardy's uh, uh, movie career and it says Black Hawk Down. I'm like, where the fuck is he in Black Hawk Down? He's the guy that's with Red that they're, they're running yep. to Mogadishu and they're just, you know, that's who yeah. he is. I'm like, oh, and he's so fucking young. Yeah. And, Time goes by, I like I realize how big that cast was in oh, Hell yeah. yeah. That and and uh, fucking um uh, Saving Private Ryan with uh what's his face? Uh Fast with Fender Vin, and um, Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel. Oh yeah, no, that that, that one I know, but um yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what else Michael Bay did mm-hmm. that is it's kind of one of those really, really underrated movies, uh Pain and Gain. I don't know if you guys ever saw that with that Mark was, Wahlberg. It was long, no. but it was actually good. I that was actually that was really funny. fucking good. Um, never, no, I've never seen that. Yeah, I no, had I had so I, much fun with it. It, it was I, really I enjoy fun. more Michael Bay movies than I like to admit. Uh, but there are yeah. some which are like, seriously, what the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> like the Transformers um, franchise? Yes. <laughs> Yes. All right, guys. Uh, you guys want to plug anything before I wrap it up? Yes. Uh, the Unknown Podcast. We are going to be dropping our second episode tomorrow from when this drops. And we're actually, we our first episode was The Man from Turid. And we are actually going into more uh, alternate <clears throat> dimension uh, stories. And this one's a good one, I promise. So if you guys want to check us out, uh, any of the podcast channels, check out the Unknown Podcast. All right, all right. find us there. William, do you want to plug anything, bud? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have m- much to plug right now, other than like you know, always check me out on um, Instagram, House of Phoenix Cosplay. Um, I, if nothing changes, I should be back in or not back. I should be down in Orlando visiting end of the month. So hopefully, Lewis will make time for me. <laughs> you'll be like i got five minutes all right i'll take it uh <laughs> but um no other than that uh that's really no nothing ah huh? awesome as always if you enjoyed our show visit our sister site diversitygeek.org our brother from another mother john over at youtube at narcotic casserole thank you lewis thank you brandon thank you william Thank you, Brandon. Oh, man. He said thank you, Brandon. Also, both of them said it. I feel special. Brandon, see I, 
Yes. Brandon. Brandon. As, Brandoncito. As always, I am Brandon. And we'll see you guys on the next episode of Three Idiots with a Mic. Cue the drums. Motherfucking drums? The motherfucking drums.